This video is designed to take you through the setting up procedure for the DeWalt radial arm saw, but in no way is it designed to replace the instruction manual, which should be fully read before you carry out any work on the machine. One, unpacking. First, lay out all of the components. Then, using the instruction manual, check that nothing is missing. Two, assembling the leg stand. 250 millimeter machines have a separate leg stand. Lay the components out in equal lengths then assemble finger tight as per the instructions. On larger machines, the legs are fitted directly to the base. The machine can now be placed on the leg stand. Make sure the machine is located on level ground before fully tightening all the nuts. Three, fitting the elevator handle. Using the self-tapping Phillips screw, attach the elevator handle. Then raise the column to its maximum height. Four, Mounting the motor yoke assembly. First, remove the end cap from the arm. Then, with the inner stud on the rip lock located on the outside, slide the motor and yoke assembly onto the arm. Check that the yoke runs freely and clean the tracks with a dry cloth. Never use oil or grease as this will attract dust. Finally, replace the end cap and secure. Next, fit the cable support. The cable is then secured to the back of the arm using the cable clamp. Five, setting the table parallel to the arm. The table must be parallel to the arm. Using the hexagonal bolts, Fit the support brackets to the sides of the frame. And secure the bolts finger tight. Release the bevel clamp and location pin and rotate the motor vertically. Then re-tighten the clamp. Release the mitre latch and clamp. Then lower the motor arbor so that it just touches one of the brackets. Check that both brackets are level with the arbor along their entire length. Finally, tighten the bolts.
Do not adjust the height assembly during this operation. Then place a straight edge across the two outer brackets. Next, adjust the center bracket until it is level. On 250 mm machines, the front nut is removed. On 300 mm machines, you also need to attach the extension support brackets to the table and side brackets. Six, assembling the table. The table consists of six parts. Take the main table and place on the support brackets, making sure the center hole lines up with the adjustment screw. Then, on 250 mm machines, attach the washer and nut. Using the M8 bolts and washers, as illustrated, fix the table. Next, attach the left-hand table using the two brackets. Finally, use the motor arbor to check that the table is parallel to the arm. Adjust the center bracket if necessary, and then clamp to secure. Fit the rear fence clamps. Then position the rear fence using the remaining strips. Finally secure using the two rear clamps. Seven, fitting the saw blade. First, remove the retaining nut, which has a left-hand thread and outer flange. Make sure the inner flange is located on the woodruff key. Attach the blade with the lower teeth pointing to the rear. Refit the outer flange and nut. Note the ring on the nut must be on the inside. Secure with the spanner and allen key. Finally, use the blade to check that the table is parallel to the arm. Eight, checking the blade is perpendicular to the table top. Clamp the motor yoke using the rip lock. Place a square on the table and against the blade body without touching the teeth. Release the bevel clamp. Remove the bevel pointer disc
Loosen the three bolts. And adjust until the blade is square. Then tighten the bolts. Finally, check adjustments. Nine, checking the cross-cut travel is perpendicular to the fence. First, make sure the arm is clamped. Place a square on a piece of wood against the back fence, then position it against the saw blade teeth. Traverse the blade to check it is parallel to the square. If not, release the mitre clamp and with the mitre latch in position, release the locking nuts on each side. Moving the arm to the left. Loosen the adjustment on the right and tighten the adjustment on the left. This is best done in small steps. Finally, secure the locking nuts while holding the opposite adjustment nut. Then clamp the arm. Reversing the procedure will move the arm to the right. Finally, check adjustments. Ten, checking the blade is perpendicular to the fence. Release the yoke clamp and latch, then rotate the blade 90 degrees until it locks. Checking it is parallel to the back fence guarantees it is square when cross-cutting. Loosen the two nuts on the underside of the yoke. And with the yoke latch in position, Move the yoke assembly until the blade is parallel to the fence. Fasten the bolts, taking care not to over tighten. Finally, check adjustments. Eleven, fitting the blade guard. The multifunctional guard comprises a number of components. Outer guard, inner guard, finger guard. anti-kickback fingers, and riving knife. First, tilt the yoke. Then remove the guard retaining wing nut. Unhook the two inner guard springs at the top and rotate the inner guard. The guard is then located on the motor housing and secured with the wing nut.
Finally, refit the rear guard. Mounting the spring return. This is mounted at one end to the travel stop and at the other end to the rip lock. 13. Adjusting the travel stop. Push the yoke assembly fully to the rear, then pull forward 5 millimeters. Position the travel stop against the rip lock housing and then secure. Fourteen, adjusting the rip scale. Ripping is done with the motor in two positions, the in-rip and the out-rip. With the fence in the rearmost position, place a board with a known width, say 30 centimeters, against the fence. Then in the out-rip mode, position the blade against the board. Adjust the measure on the lower scale to correspond with the width of the board and secure. 15. With the back fence repositioned and the blade in the in-rip mode, adjust the second pointer to read zero on the upper scale. Fifteen, adjusting the mitre scale. With the arm locked at 90 degrees, adjust the scale to read zero. Sixteen, adjusting the bevel scale. With the yoke locked at 90 degrees, adjust the scale to read zero. Seventeen, making trial cuts. First, plug the machine in. Never have the machine plugged in when making adjustments. Lock the motor at the front of the arm using the rip lock. Switch the machine on and lower the arm until the blade just cuts into the table. Release the clamp and slide the yoke to the rear, cutting through the fence. Switch off. Eighteen. Checking the cut is square to the fence. With a wide piece of timber, position the finger guard just above it. Keeping your fingers clear, slowly make the cut. This is cross-cutting. Check the cut is square. If not, refer to section 9, cross-cut travel perpendicular to fence, to make adjustments. 19. Checking the cut is square to the table. With a thick piece of wood, make a cut. Check that the cut is square. If not, refer to section 8, blade perpendicular to table, to make adjustments. 20. Checking the cut is square to the fence. 
If the material shows signs of chipping on the surface, the blade is not square to the back fence. Check the blade is parallel to the back fence. If not, refer to section 10. 21. Bevel cuts. The procedure for this is the same as for cross cuts using the bevel scale. Twenty-two, mitre cuts. Set the arm at the required angle using the scale, then proceed as for cross-cutting. Twenty-three, rip cutting. With the fence repositioned, set the machine for an in or out rip using the scale. Switch on and just cut into the table. Switch off. Now adjust the riving knife and anti-kickback fingers as per the instructions. You can now make the cut. Twenty-four, bevel ripping. The setup is the same as when normal ripping. Twenty-five, compound mitres. Combining a bevel and mitre cut produces a compound mitre. Twenty-six, additional accessories for the DeWalt radial arm saw. There are a number of accessories that will greatly enhance the versatility of your radial arm saw. Mitre fences will speed up and increase the angle cutting capacity. Dado heads make grooving and trenching simple. The drum sander is ideal for sanding curved workpieces. The disc sander is used for flat or bevel sanding. Router brackets convert the radial arm saw into an overhead router. With care, your radial arm saw will give you many years of service. Should you have any problems, contact your nearest service agent.